Some of you may already know, but if you don't know, the restrooms are going to be straight down the hallway through the double doors. If that restroom is occupied, then there needs to be a use of a restroom upstairs. The only way you can do that is if a chaperone takes the student upstairs. You don't want any students upstairs without a chaperone, because there are classes and stuff still going on. So make sure if the chaperone people upstairs. But all the restrooms that are going to go straight through the door. You have to go through the door there.
Good morning to you. I am thrilled that we are back in action for our 2022 Ohio Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Geography Challenge. Yay! This is the first event that we have had in our conference as a conference-wide event since the last time we had a geography challenge two years ago in 2020 at Worthington. Uh, COVID has uh, wreaked havoc on a lot of things. So it is really great to see you guys here. Uh, welcome to everybody that is online. Thank you for taking the time to, to join us. Yep, you can all turn away. Hi. Uh, you'll get to see these beautiful faces quite a bit uh, very shortly uh, whenever they come on up. I want to be very clear about those that are online. This is very important. All times are subject to change. What that means is this. If we were to get through one through four in a more expedited fashion, we will start five through eight. So those of you that might be thinking that for sure that one, whether we have a one o'clock time or whatever, that is not in granite. Which state is that, by the way? What's the granite state? I don't know, because it might be a question later. <laughs> <laughs> so just please keep that in mind. So those of you who are online, please understand that this is not, the, 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 the schedule you have is not written in stone, okay? So a few things that we want to talk about here, for those that are here, first of all, the restrooms, as I stated earlier, because some of you would come up a little bit later, go down the hallway and use those restrooms through the doors there. If you need to go upstairs because those restrooms are being occupied, there must be a chaperone that takes the student upstairs. We do not want any students roaming around upstairs. There are classes going on and students up there, so we want them to be as least disruptive as it possible to be. Secondly, if you want water, do not drink the water out of the water fountain downstairs. Do not, N-O-T, capital letters, underline, my, you know, bold face, flashing letters, all that, do not. If you want water, Ms. Mrs. Straw, she's waving at you, right? she will give you a bottle of water and feel free to take it. We do not want you drinking the water uh, uh, downstairs here. Um, the other thing, and then we actually start the, the program and start the competition. It is very important to understand a few ground rules. First of all, respect. What does that mean? There are somebody who's up there and they are given a question and they are in their moment. Please respect and do not 
make noises or groans or ooh, 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 or anything like that because it really disrupts thinking. And a lot of our kids are already nervous enough and we don't need them to be more nervous. We want them up there feeling very relaxed. We have the greatest MC on planet Earth to help people feel relaxed. Uh, Mr. Ken Knudsen, we're going to introduce him to this All right. <laughs> But it's really important that we do that. The other thing is, and I shared this with you before, and I'll share it every time we do something like this. Every single question is easy when you know the answer. <laughs> Every single question is easy when you know the answer. Why do I say that? Because I always hear little people, oh, that's so easy. You want to know why it's easy? Because you know the answer. There might be a time where something comes up, I and mean, I get these brain blocks all the time. Like, oh, I know this. And they're like, oh, and then you know, that clock is ticking down from 20 minutes. You know, you start to sweat, and your armpits are like dripping, like, oh my God, you know, all that stuff. It, it, you know, it kind of weighs on you. So please understand, if somebody misses one that you think was easy, no comments. Another thing, if a question comes up, they, oh, they got that super easy one. Again, it's easy because you know the answer. Okay? And if you study really hard, guess what? They're all going to be what? They're all going to be easy. If you didn't study very hard, guess what? They're all going to be hard or difficult. Okay? So it's very important that you understand that. And I just want to be clear about that. I don't want anybody feeling bad in this question. I've spent more hours than I care to admit on this thing. You know, to feel like, oh my goodness, I forget what that is. I had to go back and look it up because I forgot too. And I know this stuff pretty well. Okay, so please be respectful of that. And last but not least on this, there, we do have a contestant that may not make it and get their third strike. Okay, I want us all to give a very polite uh, applause for them when they come down off the stage because it is, takes a lot of bravery for young people to come up here and not only face you guys, they're facing literally tons, hundreds and hundreds of people online. I don't want to make even more nervous, but I have had a lot of people tell me that they're tuning in for this. Okay? So there, I just really hyped it up, didn't I? So. <laughs> yes. All right? So it's really important that we show them our respect and our appreciation by giving them a round of applause. So let's talk about how this is going to work, okay? So here's how it's going to work. Uh, so the first group that we're going to deal with is going to be uh, work with is going to be uh, uh, age grades one to four. They're going to come up here. Mr. Kanisa is going to announce the, uh, the name of each one. They're going to come up here one at a time so everybody can kind of see who you are. And you can look and give a little wave to the camera while you're up here doing that, all that stuff. And then you're going to kind of get in a little semicircle up here. And then Mr. Knudsen is going to call you up and he is going to read the question that is on the screen. Now, those of you that are watching online, You'll be able to see the question hopefully as well on the screen. There's a few of the questions at the very beginning that have pictures, but not all of them, and not, you know, not like before, okay? So it's going to be what you know. Now, you might be asking, well, Mr. Bianco, where do those questions come from? Thank you for asking. All right? We have had some complaints that geography is big, and geography is big. Geography is kind of history, you know. Uh, 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 states, political maps, and, and all kinds of rivers and mountains and geological features, just all kinds of stuff that goes into geography. So we have been asked, what can we do to give our kids a fighting chance? What we did is every one of our schools was sent books for their age group. So this one right here. So every single question today, every single question today, We'll have information that for grades one to four that will derive from this book. We have three judges here. I will announce them in a little bit here. If there is a protest on the question, like, oh, no, I'm pretty sure that's right, you could say, hey, I, I'd like that to be double checked. I've already double, triple checked, but you know what? I could be wrong again. Okay? You can go send it over to the judges, and they will use this book, look it up and see if there is validity to your protest, okay? And we've had one time now where it got overruled, uh, and that was because we used different dates for our census data, but I was 
wrong, <laughs> and I'm going to put that in big quotation marks. I was wrong. Um, now here is the grades five through eight. Every single question will come from this book. So geography is obviously far greater than what's contained in these two books. But the point is this, young people, if you've seen these books, which if you haven't, I need to talk to your teachers, okay? Because every single question is coming from these books, like I was stated, okay? We will check here and make sure that those answers are valid. So, after we get through a round, okay, you have an opportunity, you have a potential of getting three strikes. What that means is that you can have three total misses, okay? After a round is over, if you have you've gotten your third strike during that round, our judges will alert Mr. Knudsen and say, well, Rick Bianco, after round three, he's already got his third strike. Well, then what Mr. Knudsen said, well, thank you, Mr. Bianco, you can get out to your seat. And that's when we will all give a nice, polite applause. And Mr. Bianco tried his best. That's all we care about. I don't care about anything else other than you trying your best. Okay? Now, as we get rolling on forward, further and further along, after round six, if you have somebody, one of your peers, you may utilize a lifeline if there's a question that is stumping you. And that lifeline will get the same 20 seconds that you will have to answer it. No more, no less, okay? If they miss it, you miss it. If they get it right, you get it wrong, okay? Now, you cannot answer a question, get it wrong, and then ask for a lifeline. It doesn't work that way. Good try, Charlie. Not gonna happen, okay? Now, if we get to a point where we're getting close to that top three, the top three have an opportunity to win some stuff. First place, you get this beautiful trophy, and just as beautiful, or, or so, you get a fresh, crisp, flat, freshly minted bench, baby. Ain't nothing better than a hundred dollar bill. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, second place, beautiful trophy again. And you also get a fresh, crisp, clean, I believe it's Ulysses S. Grant. For $50 bill, is that correct? Yeah. All right, so yeah, $50 for second place. <laughs> now, Mr. Straw likes the third place very nice like trophy, but you third place, you get this really cool medallion. <laughs> All right, so that's really cool. But you don't get a single bill. No, 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 you're special. You're special. You get. I believe it's an Andrew Jackson and an Abraham Lincoln. Is that correct? Is that a 20 and a 5? I don't know if that's right. <laughs> Is that right? All right, so you will get $25. So everybody that finishes in the top three, you will get a cash prize, and more importantly, that trophy that will sit on that medallion that will sit and let you guys know, hey, I know that I've visited some schools. Some of you guys have placed your trophies on, on a place where people come in to look at. Mantle, I love it. I love the mental Mantle. And checking that out, man, it's so cool to pride down Mantle. What they do with their trophies that they win as a group, Mantle. So I think it's really, really cool, Mantle, that you do that. All right? So I just want to encourage you to follow Mantle, Lee, on this map. Okay? Pretty cool stuff, Mantle. All right? Um, let me introduce our participants, our major players here, our eye candy. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that red hat in the middle, boy. He's like, yeah. I'm the flower. I'm a rose. Okay? <laughs> Before I introduce them, though, I want to just real quick give a huge, and I mean absolute huge thank you and shout out to Mr. Johnson. Mrs. Flower, Mrs. Flower, Mr. Stahl, Mrs. Stahl, Mrs. Fernandez, and, and the entire Eastwood team 
for getting this all set up and looking at, oh yes, all of you guys down here, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right, rocking back here, Eastwood, okay, thank you, looks great, we are very, very grateful for you, great job. I don't know if she's watching online, but I'm going to throw it out for her anyways. I want to give a huge thank to Courtney Straub. She has designed our t-shirts this year, which I love, so thank you, Courtney. All right. Thank you for that. My right-hand woman uh, over there, Janice Straub, she keeps everything straight for me, because if not, I have to be like spilling out all over the place. So I want to give a huge thank to her. Thank you, Janice. And then Roy and Esther, thank you also for giving us some cash. <laughs> yeah, right. And then Roy and Esther are able to watch us because of the amount of work that a young man behind us has done. And I am so grateful for him for getting the link set up and all this uh, equipment set up. So I want to give a huge shout out to Mr. Casper Howell. Thank you so much, Casper. This one's right here. So our MC today is a uh, former superintendent for the Ohio Conference, uh, has also been a principal of a number of our uh, wonderful institutions across the United States, and has been the vice principal at Spring Valley now, I think a total, this is six years again, but before that, so how long has Spring Valley been? 13 years. I think 13 years. <laughs> He's an old dude, man. But, uh, but so let's give a big welcome to Mr. Ken Knudsen, right? And then again, back to our eye candy here, we have three very distinguished gentlemen who have taken time out of their incredibly busy schedules to be here, and I am so grateful to each and every one of them. We're going to start off here on my far right. Uh, uh, a gentleman that never came to the conference has just been a wonderful friend and just somebody a confidant, somebody that I just love as 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 a family member and not a colleague. Uh, Mr. Oswaldo Bagania, he is our Ohio Conference uh, Executive Secretary. And Chiefs, okay. <laughs> and in the middle there is the lesser half of the dynamic duo. Because Janice is definitely the greater half, okay? Because she's awesome. But we'll, we'll check Harry. But Harry Straub, he is in, uh, he leads out our plan giving department, and he has been a part of every single one of these, I think. He's been the only one that's been here for every time, so I want to give a big shout out to Harry Straub. All right. Now, the next one I'm going to announce, he keeps on saying he's the new guy here. It's been two years. He's not allowed to ever say that anymore, okay? But our president, uh, is this is our first time with this, right? Okay, so we're very, very happy to have you because I think that I think that when we had our last one, you were kind of just kind of getting on board. You didn't even make it to Ohio as of yet, I don't think, at that time because it was in March or February 4th. So you were just kind of like, hey, I'm going to be coming to Ohio. But uh, we're very, very honored and proud to have with us today uh, President Bob Condon. So let's give him a round of applause. Spoken enough, I'm going to turn it over to uh, my friend and colleague, Mr. Ken Knudsen, and we're going to have a welcome and a word of prayer. A little, little All, right. Right. All right, good morning, guys. Glad to see you all. I will stand back here so I don't start coming. Glad to see everyone here today. It is uh, well, it depends. How many wish all the rain was snow? Anybody want more snow? I see it's everybody under the age of, I don't have to shovel the sidewalk. All right, there we go. Well, we are all glad you are here safe and sound. And um, I actually, I have no idea if she's watching this or not. I did send her a link, and that is to my mom. So, hi, mom. If you are watching, we'll see. I'll find out later. She'll tell me. Uh, so glad that we have the live stream so others can join. So all those online, welcome, glad you are here. This morning before we get to the contestants up front, I just want to remind us, why are we here? We are here for geography, right? So I just want to go back, who created all of the geography we're going to be asking about today? 
God, right? In fact, when we open our Bibles, that's exactly the very first thing we see, right? God created. And how incredible of God he is. That he has made all of this. Even though when he first created it, it was perfect, right? And then we know the story of the you know, fallen of sin. We have this incredible story where Jesus came and gave his life so that we can have eternal. But we also know right now we live in a world that is affected by sin, right? Even though there are beautiful things for us to look at that God has created and given us, we know that when he comes again, we're going to go back to heaven and again be in perfect creation. And I can't wait for that. The last couple of years, because it's been, when was the last time we were here? Well, we were here in 2019, we were in 2020 and we're 2019 was the last time I was here, and uh, during that time, a little bit of stuff has, been, has gone on, right? That's why some of us have to wear this. And we've been in, in school, out of school, online school, all that crazy stuff, right? So I am ready for God to come back and to put us into a perfect creation. Can't wait. Let's bow our heads for prayer. And then, I got nervous contestants that are ready to come answer the question. So let's bow our heads. Lord, we come before you this morning to celebrate the creation you have given us. Lord, thank you. Not only for giving us creation, but also to give your son so that we can look forward to another perfect creation. Can't wait to be home with you, Lord. This morning, I ask, Lord, that you be with each one of these contestants. It's nervous sometimes. It's hard to get up front and uh, face your peers, to look at a camera. But, Lord, these guys have studied, so give them calm nerves, settle their stomachs, put the butterflies away, and help them to demonstrate what they have learned. We thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, our first group is from the illustrious grades of one through four. Anybody here resemble that? First grade? Who's out here from first grade? Anybody? Second grade? Third grade? All right, we got some third graders here. Fourth grade? All right, we're ready to go. You have an announcement. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Bianco has given me a list. So, Amelia Claiborne from Mansfield. And if I say your name wrong, I am so sorry. Come on up. Am I close on your name? You said it right. Yes. All right. Here we go. One for one. Stephen. Sutton Fowler from Mount Vernon. Evie, I like it. I should read one to read too. All right. Now that is an awesome headband, by the way. Oh, very cool. All right. All the way from Mayfair, Delbert Cole. Am I saying that right? Oh, all right. All right. All right. From Mayfair, Smart, which is an excellent name. <laughs> and I'm, I apologize, Marash Aboka. I hope I'm a little bit. <laughs> All right, there you go. Okay. From Noah, Ooh, nice little drive today. Penelope Rodriguez. Merrick Church. You have a classmate, Kennedy Cox. Come on up, Kennedy. Just right up in the line here. Welcome, welcome. 
All right. Hey, I have known him as a person for quite several years now. Bliss Romina. Come on, I'm just going to get a little bit, guys, right this way. We're going to slide the light out here. Come on over, fill in. That way the camera can get everybody here. Oh, here's another person I've seen before. Zori. Come on over. Zori, here we go. Come on, Zori. Ishwa, Jair, Martinez Greenwald, Jair. <laughs> and our last contestants for the grade one through four is Eva Overcast. <laughs> All right, let's see. We got Amelia. We got there. Stevie. All right. One down. One up. Okay. Delbert. Got it right. Smart. Penelope. Merrick. Kennedy. Bliss. Zuri. Jair. Ava. Is it Ava or Eva? Ava. Ava. All right. Make sure I get it right. All right. All right, guys. These are our contestants for our first group, our grades one through four geography challenge. Now, you guys remember all the rules, right? All right. We got two rounds of state capitals. We have two rounds of state birds, trees, animals, and flowers. I might run into trouble there. All right. Round, uh, three rounds of fantastic and terrific facts. Terrific <laughs> traffic pass. One round of roadside attractions, which must be the accident from the traffic. <laughs> one round of geographic features, and then one round of cool things to do. All right. We'll see, we'll see. All right, Amelia. Come on up to the mic here. That's right. Your first question is, this state's capital city is... Dover. You got it. Nice job. This one can be the one. Steve, come on up. Give me this down so you can hear. All right, here we go. Next, your question is, this state's capital city is? You're doing a timer. <laughs> All right. You see it over there? It's a hard one, isn't it? It's the one in the yellow. What capital is that state? All right, we are out of time. Any guests? All right. All right, coming down to the end. All right, Ms. Bianco, that is what? Springfield. All right. Way to go, Stevie. That was a challenging one because honestly, the only way I can remember that is I watched The Simpsons. But anyway, Delbert, come on up. This state's capital city is? Juno. Excellent job. You got it. Guys, nice. I'm going to take a couple steps this way. All right, smart, come on up. Here we go. This state's capital city is... All right, I need an answer. You got a guess? All right. 
Good try. I like it. All right. It's a little rock. Here we go, another state capital. This state's capital city is... City. 
what is the capital of the Cornhusker State? Here, because that's my home state. So. 
Missouri. Let's see, what are we gonna get here? What is the capital of the state known as the Grand Canyon State? Phoenix. Jair, which one are we going to get? What is the capital of the state known as the Silver State? Washington. Nice hey, what are we going to get? What is the capital of the state known as the Rough Rider State? Or try? All right, let's see what it is. This part. Oh, man. All right. All right. All right. All right, we are back to round three now, right? So we'll just allow this will have two items. Either a bird and a flower, a flower and animal tree, and tell us two items they have to name the state that has these as their okay. So you need to name the state. It's going to give you two clues. Be a bird, flower, tree, or animal, and you are to tell us the name of the state. I'll see if I get this one right. All right, what is our question? What state has as its state bird, which is the cactus ring, and the animal, which is a ring-tailed cat? What state? has the cactus ring, ring, and the ring tail cat. All right, you got a guess? Colorado. Colorado. Arizona. <laughs> Just surprised my child doesn't want a ring hill cat. Stevie, let's see what we got here. What state has as its state bird the meadow lark and the flower, which is the Indian paintbrush? What state has the meadow lark as its state bird and the Indian paintbrush as its flower? Any guess? No? All right, let's see, what is it? Why, oh, man. Just a quick, isn't that when you can pull it, and then you can like, do face paint and then just check it? Just... All right, you ready, Bill? Let's see what we got here. What state has as its state animal the moose and the white pine cone and tessel for the flower? What state has as its state animal the moose and the white pine cone and tassel as the flower? All right, we're going to need an answer. What do you got? Got one? No? All right, let's see what it is. It's a what is it? Maine. Maine. It's Maine. Good job. I honestly went to Canada until it dawned on me. Wait a second. You got it. Smart. Let's see what we got here. What state has as its state bird the lark bunting? And the flower is the Rocky Mountain Columbine. It's Illinois. Colorado. Oh, good job. Appreciate that. Not yet. 
All right, Penelope. Are we ready? Here we go. Let's see what we get here. What state has as its state bird the eastern goldfinch? And the animal is a horse. Eastern goldfinch is the bird, and the state animal is a horse. Florida? Is it Florida? New Jersey. <laughs> Is that in like a race truck? <laughs> All right, I would not have connected that one. I was just, that wasn't where I was going to Tennessee, so no, I'm way off this here. All right, Bert, we ready? Let's see if we get. What state has as its state animal a black bear, and the flower is the rhododendron? Black bear? Hawaii. Okay. West Virginia. That's just on the other side of the street. Good try. Good try. It's good to see you again. Seems like I just talked to you. All right. Let's see what we got here, Kennedy. What state has as its state bird? The mockingbird. And the flower is orange blossom. What state would have the mockingbird as a state bird or the orange blossom as its flower? Let's say that again. Florida. Yes! State bird and the southern long leaf chime for the tree. The yellow hammer and the southern long leaf chime. What state? Alabama. Alabama. Let's see what we get. What state has as its state animal the monk seal and the hibiscus as its state flower? Hawaii. Hawaii. Nice! <laughs> right here. Let's see. What do we got? What state has as its state bird the mountain bluebird? And the flower is the syringa, or somewhere that's close to it. The mount, mountain bluebird and the syringa. Don't know? You still got about five seconds left? Want to take a guess? Got it? No? All right, what, do we, what, what is it? Where do we got? I said, I don't know. I thought if you would just take out the nut part, you would have No! You were so close! Oh, man! That's what it's about. Ava, let's find out what this is. What state has, as its state bird, the bluebird, and the animal is a beaver? Bluebird and a beaver. Wyoming. What was it? Wyoming. Wyoming. Is that what you? Okay, Wyoming. New York. Uh, the other side. I'm going to say beavers must be upstate, <laughs> not in New York. All right, we have our third round, so we've completed our third round, right? So we have we're 
we're seeing who is Gotcha. Stevie. Stevie. Smart. Yep. Smart. Mary. Mary. And Eva. And Eva. They have their third strike. They have three strikes, but guys, I appreciate you guys for that. This is fantastic facts and terrific interesting traffic laws. Okay. Fantastic facts and interesting traffic laws. For all the parents in here who have gotten tickets, pay close attention. Here we go. Let's go. Let's put our first question. Which state boasts the following fact? Chickens can't cross public roads in Athens Clark County. What state are chickens not allowed to cross the public roads in Athens Clark County? All right, we need an answer. Delaware. Delaware. To Georgia. You know, I could have gone with Delaware too. But they'll never find out why the chicken cross the door. No question. All right. Dilbert. What interesting fact. Okay, which state boasts the following fact? Over 147 million ounces of gold are locked away in Fort Knox. Arizona. Arizona. No, it's in Kentucky. Nice job. You can send a few answers my way. Penelope, let's see what we got here. Which state boasts the following fact? Francis Scott Key wrote the national anthem after watching Fort McHenry being bombarded. What state? Francis Scott Key wrote the national anthem after watching Fort McHenry being bombarded. Alabama. Alabama. It's in Maryland. Oh, we can't guess. Hit it. You ready? Let's see what we got here. Which state boasts the following fact? Legendary blues guitarist B.B. King was born in this state. The blues guitarist B.B. King was born in this state. Texas? Is that right? Texas. Very good job. Wow, Mr. Good job. Blitz. Which state boasts the following fact? There were eight American presidents who were born in this state. Virginia. Virginia. No. Excellent. 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 Missouri. Let's 
let's see what yours is going to be. Which state boasts the following fact? Kansas City was more than has more than 200 fountains. Which state boasts the following fact? Kansas City has more than 200 fountains. Which state? Kansas City has more than 200 fountains. Which state would that be? Kansas? Oh, Missouri across the water in Missouri. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense in the world. Good job, good job. I lived in the state and I still got those things. Jair, here we go. Ready? What state boasts the following fact? This is the only state that actively mines diamonds. Kansas. Kansas? Yeah. Oh, you're so close. Oh, oh. 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 They were totally sideways. That's how that works. All right, round two. All right. So on your next family vacation, head to Arkansas. Do a little pan, panning out there, see what you get. Okay, Zuri and Bless. They need to step aside to feed right now. Okay. So we're going to go through another round. Okay. Because these will be still quote unquote tied for third round. Gotcha. Okay. They're going to come back in, but right now this is the Okay. Just step to the side, guys. Let's make a note to confuse myself. So this is our window. Uh, right now, it's a Zuri and Liz are for sure first and second somehow somewhere. We have to wait to get a little bit right now. We have one of the Third place. That's what we're doing right now, okay? All right. We are ready. You're ready, Greg. Right? Right. Kind of ready. That's good enough. Here we go. Which state boasts the following fact? In the city of Baldwin Park, it is illegal to ride your bike in a public park. In the city of Baldwin Park, it is illegal to ride your bike in a public park. What state would that be in? Kansas. Any guess? No? All right, let's see where this is. California. Which state boasts the following fact? You can't cook inside your car on Fenwick Island. You cannot cook inside your car in Fenwick Island. Michigan? Is it Michigan? Oh, it's Delaware. All right. Let's see, what state boasts the following fact? Abraham Lincoln lived here from the age of seven until he was 21 years old. Which state did Abraham Lincoln live in from when he was seven until 21 years old? New York. New York. Indiana. Kennedy. Let's see what we got here. Which state boasts the following fact? It is illegal to ride a zebra down the road in the town of Derby. You cannot ride your zebra down the road in the town of Derby. Huh? <laughs> I don't know why we do all this. But what state do you think it might be? 
Mississippi. You see? Kansas. Well, you know, that's exactly where I thought she was working. Kansas. Good try. Good job. I better send that zebra back on Amazon. <laughs> All right, we got it. Try here. You ready? What's this thing? Turtle. All right, Turtle, are you ready too? All right, we're good to go. All right. Which state boasts the following fact? The only way to travel around Mackinac, Mackinac Island, I'm going to go that, sorry, is by bike or horse drawn carriage. Mackinac. Michigan. Yeah. One more? No, we have no. Yeah. 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 All right. So let's give a big round of applause to everybody. No, no, no. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I have learned many new things. I cannot cook inside my zebra. I mean, sorry. Zaire, you're here. Zaire, you're here. Just at the end, Zaire. It's going to be the next questions are Bliss, Missouri. So, Bliss, I'm going to have to come up first here in order. These are still. Facts, same category? I'm going, to, I'm going to go to another category. Okay. Um, hey, can we have an update on where each of them are in their stripes? And Bliss is zero, and Missouri is one. Wow. Okay. And then Zaire, you're in third place. You're just going to stand to the side, buddy. Okay. You're going to stand right in front of it. Yeah. All right. All right. So the next category is going to be roadside attractions. <laughs> All right, we're going to look at attractive roads here. And hey, what round is this? This is the fifth round. The fifth round, okay. We'll do a couple rounds of this and then we'll go to the geographic features after that. Okay. Roadside attractions. Which state can check out the following roadside attractions? Metropolitan. Metropolitan. Thank you. World's largest ketchup bottle and a two story outhouse. My personal favorite. Virginia? Is it Virginia? Oh, Illinois. All right, good job. <laughs> two story outhouse. All righty. Zuri, here we go. Which state can you check out the following roadside attractions? Enchanted Highway, World's Largest Buffalo, and a Rockin' Museum. Wyoming. Wyoming. Oh, North Dakota. Boy, that's pretty good. Huh? <laughs> we are back with Bliss. Okay. We'll see where we're at. Gotcha. Which state can you check out the following roadside attractions? The National Baseball Hall of Fame, Coney Island, and Secret Caverns. National Baseball Hall of Fame, Coney Island, and Secret Caverns. New Mexico? New Mexico. Down in New York. New York! Oh my goodness. Wow. Those caverns are so secret. I didn't even know them. All right. Zero, let's see what we got here. Which state can you check out the following roadside attractions? Dinosaur Park. American Visionary Art Museum and B and O Railroad Museum. Florida. Florida. Maryland. Boy, boy. Good job. Let's go, Mark. Okay. 
The winner is Bliss.
more of it. How do you want us to kind of do this? Uh, there is room to eat in there. I will not say it's a thing you can hear. Room to eat is not going to make you unlike There is lots of people to eat. We prefer for you to eat in the cafeteria, so you're going to go down the hallway here, through the doors. It'll be on your right. It'll be a door into it together. We prefer that you eat in there. If there is so much. Thank you. If it is so full in there that we can't, we, there's a few of us that have to eat in here. The rule is, if something happens, you clean it up clearly. But we prefer strongly that we eat inside of the cafeteria. All right, so thank you very much and enjoy lunch. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Johnson.
Iya. Satu lagi.
They're the stars of the show. She asked me where she is. You got one. Mr. Caduce and I are going to turn it over to you, my friend. All right. Welcome back to our free lunch. Always thought that everybody should have a mandatory 30 minute nap. Yeah. Amen. I'm the high school vice principal in Spring Valley Academy, but I actually have all quite a few of my high schoolers come in and ask for me to schedule some time of a nap time. If I can figure out how to get it in, you'll do that. All right, before we begin, this, uh, the next section here, 5 through 8, since we have now returned from lunch, uh, let's again open up with a word of prayer. And then I will uh, call the seventh or fifth to eighth leaders. So let's call our heads for prayer. Lord, again, we want to thank you for the fun time we had this morning, for the challenging questions, for the excellent answers, for the effort and energy that went in uh, as we celebrated your creations, dear Lord. Now, as we open up this afternoon, I again ask that you be with the uh, contestants. Uh, May their stomachs be calm and the butterflies be still as they do their best to answer the questions before them. In your name, amen. amen. All right, Paxton Miller, come on up. Mikey. Last thing. Fuller. Mikey Fuller. Let's welcome Mikey Fuller. There we go. How was that? Alright, now I'm nervous. Did Annabelle come? Yes! Alright, Annabelle back. Come on up. Next is Nicholas Myers. It seems we got a, a familiar name going here. Uh, Noah, come on. Uh, Zion, white, white man from Mayfair. Zion, come on. You're going to have to bless me. Bless us! I can do it. Olivia Lee. Well, I've seen this thing before, too. Austin Marcone. Somehow being bigger takes up more space than one, two, four guys. All right. From Piqua, Addison Hobbs. A familiar face, David Constantine. Another familiar face, Jones, Lindo. Next is Janali Garcia Santangi. And our last contestant today is Anthony Narada. Smiley faces, so come on down here, down to here, and let me go see if I got this right. I might be. 
in the Nicholas, Noah, Molestus. You're right here. Let's switch places here. Right, right, okay. Olivia, Austin, Addison, David, Jones, Yanali, and Anthony. Got him? All right. Come on. Come on. Do I dare move this mic over a little bit? Just making sure. As long as, as, long as I can see. Do I? As long as I can see. Yeah. They can, they can see the screen. All right. All right. Now, so this morning, don't worry. We'll see how many zebras come up. Chickens crossing roads, two story outhouses. Anything else unique and weird? Let's see what this Bianca throws our way. All right, we're going to have two rounds of state capitals. Okay? One round of largest cities, two rounds of charts and graphs information, one round of geographic features, two rounds of geoids, one round of statehoods and one round of state nicknames. Mr. Bianco is up doing himself here today. All right, Mike, are you ready? All right, come on up to the mic. Move this out of the way. Mr. B and the timer is on that table, just so you see. All right, state capitals, here we go. The state capital is You want to take a guess? You got three, two, one. Tallahassee. Tallahassee. Landscape. Annabelle. All right. Annabelle, state capital.
What's the state? Or no, it's what's the capital? Sorry, Hartsford. Hartsford. Oh, Anna, good job. I can not even think of the state. Zion. What is the state capital? Santa Fe. I promise I didn't eat too much of the garlic bread. I won't get you. All right. Here we go. Set. State Capitol. What's your guess? Um, I don't know. No, all right. It's the capital, I don't know. Harrisburg. All right. All right. All right. Good try. Good try. Jones, you ready? No pressure. What do we got? State capital. Capital. 
Salt Lake City.
two. So they'll be doing state name and they have to tell us the largest city in that state. Okay. State name, what is the largest city within that state? Let's make sure I don't mess this up. Yeah, they're, they're giving you the city. Right. I'm saying the state name, they're giving me the city. That's correct. See how bad I messed this up. Go for it. All right, here we go. Nebraska, the largest city in Nebraska. Any guess? All right, what do we got? Omaha. All right. Good job. Good job. Good job. Land of experience, right? All right, Annabelle. What is the following state's largest city? Connecticut. What is the largest city in Connecticut? Not an idea. All right, so Bridgeport. All right, I blew that one. Good try. Huh? Got me. I'm going a whole different direction. Nicholas, Nevada. What is the what state? Largest city in Nevada. Not sure, want to take a guess? Carson City. Las Vegas. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Noah. Kansas. What is the largest city in Kansas? Topeka. Man, I was right with you. All right, man. Good guys. Lessons, come on up. Let's see. Which state do we have here? The largest city in New Jersey. Say it a little louder. Trenton. Trenton. New York. New York. percentage is getting off the low one. All right, Zion, which state do we get? We are looking in South Carolina. What is the largest city in the state of South Carolina? What? Columbia, is that what you said? Yeah, Columbia. Charleston, wow, good idea. Let's see, which state does you can we get here? New Hampshire. What is the largest city in New Hampshire? Dakota. 
No, I don't. Want to guess? No. All right. What is the largest city in North Dakota? Fargo. All right. I honestly wasn't sure there were cities in it. All right, Fargo. All right. David, here we go. What is the largest city in Wisconsin? Largest city in Wisconsin. All right, need an answer. I'm going to have to say Madison. Madison. All right, that's a good one. I'm going to go with Milwaukee. Just because it comes out of Chicago. I can tell you it will not be where I am from in Wisconsin, which is Harbin, which had 363 people, 500 cows. But you know, what are you doing? All right. What is your. Jones, you have Delaware. What is the largest city? In Delaware. Not sure. Want to guess? Dover. Dover. Oh, Wilmington. Good. Oh, good. 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 All right. Now. Here we go. South Dakota. What is the largest city in South Dakota? Pierre. Pierre. Sioux Falls. Anthony, what do we have here? Montana. Say it again. Billings. Okay. This is the end of round three, correct? So we need to check with the judges here. It's kind of sad, that whole round. I got Milwaukee. Woo. Man. Actually, I got Charleston. Anybody been to Charleston? Some really cool stuff down there. Which I can't go into because it may be a question later. But trust me, there's some really good stuff down there. Thank <laughs> you. All right, the judges have tabulated. They have counted. Those are three. Are number one, Mikey. Number four, Noah. Number five, Blesses. Number nine, Addison. And number ten, and David. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a strong round of applause. I know we're used to social distancing, but we're going to come down a little closer here together. All right, we are geographic features. All right, geographic features. So on these, they're going to be given geographically the state. Okay, I'm looking for a state. Correct. You're going to give me the name of the state that this feature is in. It could be mountains, rivers, lakes, anything that is inside the state or adjacent to the state. Okay. A geographic feature. Mr. Bianco is a geographic feature in. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, let's go. Here we go. Annabelle. What state boasts the following geographic feature? The Longfellow Mountains runs through the middle of this beautiful state. The Longfellow Mountains run through the middle of this beautiful state. 
All right, you got a guess? Utah. Maine. All right. Good guess, though. Good one. All right. All right, here we go. Which state boasts the following geographic feature? The Delaware River makes up the western border of this state. And the Delaware Bay makes up most of the southern border of this state. Maryland. New Jersey. <laughs> All right. Take a minute to talk a little on this section, too. All right. Uh, Zion, you ready? You're doing better than I am on this. Let's see what we get. What state most of all geographic feature? The Mississippi River makes up the western border of this state, while the Ohio River makes up the southern border of this state. You got a guess? Michigan? Illinois. All right, here we go. All right. All right, Olivia, let's see what we got. Which state boasts the following geographic feature? The Shenandoah Mountains and Washington National Forest are beautiful aspects of this state. Virginia. Other I can see where you were going with that. You. Austin. You ready? Let's see what we got here. Which state most the following geographic feature? The Mississippi River creates the western border of the state, while the Gulf of Mexico creates the southern border for this state. Alabama. Alabama. Oh, one state over Mississippi. Oh, that was an excellent try. Uh, let's see. Jones, here we go. Which state boasts the following geographic feature? The Aleutian Islands extend out hundreds of miles beyond the mainland of this state. Is it Alaska? Yeah. 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 Here we go. Let's try Which state boasts the following geographic feature? Mount Hood, located in the Cascade Range, looms large in this state. South Dakota. South Dakota. Oregon. Oh, man. Good try. Good try. All right, Anthony. Let's see what we get here. Which state boasts the following geographic feature? Lake Saskatchewan, part of the Missouri River. Huh? Thank you. There we go. Extends from uh, part of the Missouri River Basin, extends from almost the western border of this state to the central part 
of the state. North Dakota. All right. Number two, Annabelle. Number six, Zion. Number seven, Olivia. Let's give that a Okay. So your name of a state. Okay. All right. What state can lay claim to this geography below? The New Madrid earthquakes in 1811, 1812 created this state's only large natural lake, Real Foot Lake. Tennessee. Boston. What are we going to get here? What state can lay claim to this geography nugget below? Many early settlers were called sodbusters because they cut chunks of the grassy prairie to build their houses. Delaware. Delaware, Nebraska. Oh, Nebraska Prairie. Good try. Good try. Jones. Here we go. What state can lay claim to this geography nugget below? The first hamburgers in U.S. history were served by Lewis Lassen in New Haven in 1895. New Hampshire. Connecticut. Whoa! Good job! Good job! We need them, right? Yeah. You ready? You ready? Which state can lay claim to this geography nugget below? The Olympic Peninsula is among the world's rainiest places, and its hot rainforest is on. The for the world's few for one of the world's few temperature temperate rainforests. Which state? Maine. Maine. It's going to be on the other side of Washington. Anthony, here we go. What state can lay claim to this geography nugget? This is the world's most isolated population center. Wyoming. Wyoming. Hawaii. All right. So number 
three, go to left. Okay, so the rest of what we're going to do is the Jones, you're going to step to the side. You are the winner of this work. Way to go. Way to go. Of the uh, winner's circle of geography here. Good morning, now. If you continue these questions, you carry it out second and third ones. Uh, correct. All right. The judges have given us a thumbs up, so we must be good. All right. So, let me make another note. So, we are back up with Nicholas here. Are we still on the same? Category, okay. Here we go. Here's your nugget. The Okihinoki Swamp is the largest swamp in North America. The Okihinoki Swamp is the largest swamp in North America. What state? Missouri. Georgia. Yeah. All right, Austin, let's see what your nugget is here. A giant fossilized rainforest has been discovered in the eastern town of Danville. What state? A giant fossilized rainforest has been discovered in the eastern town of Danville. Ancestors were exiled by the British from Acadia. Which state? Vermont. Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah. Here we go. Nicholas, we are changing topics or are we still in? Okay. All right. Got it, got it. Here we go. Here's your nugget. American presidents stay at the naval facility Thermont, better known as Camp David. What state? Virginia. Virginia. Maryland. Good guess. Good guess. All right, Austin, here we go. Here is your nugget. Charles Darrow developed the game Monopoly, basing streets after the, those in Atlantic City. Georgia. New Jersey. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right. Be bold. You got this. All right. Here we go. Petroglyphs. Thank you. Petroglyphs have been carved into rock near Flagstaff for thousands of years. Which state can lay claim to this number? Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> All right, Anthony. There we go. Which state can lay 
put into this geography nugget below, the country's first lighthouse was built on Little Brewster Island. Massachusetts, oh, good try. One more time. Same subject? Okay. Which day can they claim to this geography nugget? Highway 375 is named the extraterrestrial highway. Which state? Colorado. Very really good. Not bad. Uh, Which they can lay claim to this geography nugget. Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, which is 280 feet tall, is the tallest in the United States. Which state? Virginia. North Carolina. Which state can lay claim to this nugget? A house in Eldon is one of the most famous in the U.S. due to its part in the painting American Gothic. West Virginia. Iowa. Here we go. The Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness was the first U.S. wilderness area set aside for canoeing. Maryland, it is Minnesota. Good job, good job. We do have a nice one. I didn't know whether it was kind of around. It's in our life. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> All right. So a lifeline is someone from their school, fellow student, not your teacher, your parent, bus driver, Uber driver. Okay. No one that has access to Google. <laughs> no reading over Mr. Bianco show. All right, so if you're stumped, you can ask for a lifeline, someone from your school, and they may need to come up cues. No, they stay there. Okay, got it. Okay, we'll do one more round of this category and we'll go to another category again. Okay, one more. Here we go. Here's your geography nugget. Crater Lake is the deepest lake in the United States. Oregon. Oregon. Austin, here is your nugget. Carlsbad Caverns National Park has more than 100 caves, including the deepest limestone cavern in the United States. Virginia. New Mexico. All right. Good try. Good try. You ready? Here we go. Your nugget is the capital city has a section called Little Saigon during to be to tens of thousands of Vietnamese refugees from the 1960s. What state? Capital city has a section called Little Saigon. Oh, Oklahoma. What do we got? Sweet grass, fast 
plastic making, a traditional African art form, has been a part of the Mount Pleasant community for over 300 years. Say that again. Utah, South Carolina. We have, we have Nicholas Leonard of Second. Second place. All right. And we are down to establishing our third place winner, correct? All right, here we go. Are we changing categories, Mr. Young? Okay. Probably have a trademark issue on this one, I'm sorry. All right, what round is this? No, ten. This should be number ten. All right. All right. So this one here, there was a graph or a chart in their book, okay. and it was brought in there like to the state. Tell us the state name. Okay. You're going to see the chart. The opposite chart that I give them all of the all so close. The information from this. Book. Okay. All right, so state. The name is state. Okay, well, let's see what we got here. Which state has the following information details given on a chart or a graph? Since it first started producing cars in 1993, this state has risen to number five in total production of cars and light trucks. Tennessee. Very close. Oh, dude, I was right with you. I was right with you, Tennessee. All right, here we go. Ready? This state has the United States' largest shipping cargo port, which moves over 275 million tons. Which state has the largest shipping cargo port? We move over 275 million tons. California. Louisiana. Wow. If you had sent Kansas, we were going to have to have a question. <laughs> All right, Anthony. Here we go. Which state has the following information given on a chart or graph? Kilwana has had continuous volcanic eruptions since 1983. He says Hawaii. We're just filling out here. Missouri and 
You still have back to class already? He won and you sent him back to class. The dude should get the rest of the afternoon off. He's coming, right? We're just chilling. Yeah. All right. Kids have fun. Woo! Yeah, okay. Okay. We're all the adults and teachers. As long as you aren't reading in the book looking for the answers, how many of you got at least 50% of the questions right? 25%. Did you get a question right? Hey sponsors, get up there with them, please. Come on up. Teachers and sponsors, all the time. Come on. He's been meeting in front of the camera all day. So y'all come on up, teachers. Thank you. Bye-bye. 